Hello, Cancerians. Hi. My name is Victoria Martin, and I'm here to give you some insight about the astrology configurations of February 2016. This is going to count for Cancer Sun sign or Cancer Ascending sign. I recommend you watch both videos if you are aware of your ascending sign. Okay, let's take it away. So now for everybody, the first half of February, the mood is both manic and dreamy. For you, this affects your 8th house collaboration contracts and troubleshooting. Hmm. Okay, so that means kind of polarities that you're really enthusiastic about collaborations. Then you kind of like have a dream or you have intuition. You go, well, maybe not. <laughs> Second half of February is um, for everybody, I'm advising to pay attention to subtle clues and train your ESP. Avoid toxins and shun illusions. Easy to say, hard to do. In this case, this is affecting your ninth house of education, religion, and philosophy, sense of wonder. So, it's a kind of a complex um, thing, it looks like, accomplishing those ninth house in the second half. But I'm going to get into a lot of detail on this. So here, first of all, is our program, and it's fairly simple. There's really only three things in February that I think are interesting. Um, the new moon is a waking up process, and that's February 6th through 10th. And February 20th through 24th is the full moon. That's dreamy and manic. And then February 25th through March 2nd, Sun conjunct Neptune, interesting stories. Okay, now, this new moon is an extraordinary one because it is the beginning of the Chinese New Year. This is the year of the fire monkey. And I consulted with my colleague, Pun Yin, about this. And she says, we can expect a jumpy ride. She advises large crowds could cause nervous overload. So, focus on building strong bonds, boost your immune system, retreat into the tranquility and beauty of natural settings, curb needless social activity, avoid rushing, avoid tech pollution, and avoid disturbances. Okay, look at that fierce fire monkey. That kind of makes sense. Instead, look at that nice green <laughs> orb of tranquility. And check out uh, Feng Shui Master Pun Yin at punyin.com for more information. Very good website. Okay, now the um, back to regular astrology here. The new moon always is open and receptive, expectant, prophetic, hopeful. In this case, your eighth house is thinking, who can you collaborate with? Who do you connect with? And there's a certain amount of troubleshooting there before you enter into a contract because if you're sharing resources, you want to know what it's about. Okay, now, whoops, I want to go back to the star map here, which I have taken from an astronomy program. Now here you see the sun and moon are conjunct right at the tail of the sea goat and the shoulder of Aquarius. So it's real interesting when there are parts of the zodiac that overlap. Okay, and this is a kind of a cool place. So we're going to get into some of the star cards here in this. So here's the tail of the sea goat. And the way I think that this might, um, might fit with your 8th house is that, um, well, I think of being uh, fanatical in a positive way, but also a resourceful leader would make you a more attractive collaborator. I think imaginative communication is very good. Okay, that fits. Um, in terms of your collaborations with, uh, in, in, you know, in using the, the symbolism of Sa'ad al the luckiest of the lucky, that I think you, you want to be in the flow of, you know, they talk about cash flow, or they talk about that, you know, you know business, you know, making things move, and, um, and also appropriate challenges once achieved, create a sense of well-being, so be realistic about what you can do, okay? So I think that's all good. Uh, so then after that new moon, the resulting full moon is in the area of the third house. So this means if you play your cards right, you'll have a lot of meetings, visiting and hosting, and maybe you'll boost up your media skills. Now this full moon is close to Jupiter, so it's another kind of lucky indication. So it's kind of positive. But then um, during that full moon, the sun has now moved into your ninth house, emphasizing that all of a sudden you get a crash course in something, and it's an education emphasis and to retain your sense of wonder somehow, because you maybe have to convert that or transfer that in meetings and context. So let's take a look at the stars here 
with this full moon. Now, you know, I'm a star-based astrologer, so even though the full moon is in tropical Virgo, if you would look in the sky, in fact, I recommend you go out there and look in the sky, you're going to see the constellation Leo there. So I hope that doesn't shock all of you tropical astrologers too much because it's a little off in the, in, the, in, the, in the constellation. So the full moon here, very close to the heart of the line and the back of the line called Zosma, and, uh, and also it's close to a tiny but important and interesting constellation called Sextans, the compass. So we're going to look at this also close to Jupiter, as I mentioned, it's kind of lucky. So first, the heart of the lion is that in meetings, you may have to honor this sort of, you know, the heart of the lion, you know, these kind of, you know, noble, courageous, frank type people. And uh, be a good audience as well as a good participant. And, and making clear, uh, maybe working on the hearts of others instead of just in the minds or in the uh, what do you call it? The reptile brain. You know, you, you know, work on the hearts, and and also know when to stop. <laughs> Don't over overkill. Um, another important with the sex hands, the compass, to have a good sense of direction. Maybe um, you know to keep uh, you know, the idea of dabblers. You know, they have a lot of different ways to illustrate or make your point, or to interact with people at meetings and visits. And conjunct the star Zosma, which is a real interesting star, and I think um, it's the goddess riding the back of the line. You can see this is from a, a Persian illustration, it's rather lovely. And um, anyway, that's what that star is known, known as. And I think in this case, in meetings, you want to be both a performer, but also um, a, a therapist, and be, be very observant. So I'm not using all these qualities for all these stars, but um, just the ones that I think fit. So just to go over this full moon again, that for everybody, it is the most mystically and potentially confusing time of year. So empathy and compassion will work wonders, but we learn the fakers out there. Now in this case, in connection with education, religion, and travel, that you know, be realistic about what you can really handle. I mean, there's a lot of glamorous options there for you, but um, you know, the travel, you want to keep your, boost your immune system. Uh, and uh, be aware of the potential toxins and the chaos, especially since, remember, we talked about the Chinese New Year. You know, said so you want to protect against all kinds of toxins. And um, then continue. This full moon is, you know, for quite a while, and then it moves into the Sun conjunct Neptune. So really, it's a 10-day period from February 20th through March 2nd that there's just going to be a lot of interesting stories and just a lot of things going on, a lot of meetings for you. So just to recap, the new moon, February 6th through 10th, is the waking up process. The full moon, February 24th through 20, 20th through 24th, is dreamy and manic. And the sun conjunct Neptune, February 25th through March 2nd, interesting stories. So uh, we're going right into the you know solar eclipse, March 8th. You know you don't have to have a breath to, to, <laughs> before things start. And in your case, maybe embarking on some new educational process are some um, religious interests or religious duties, exploring philosophy, a sense of wonder, and you're going to be real aware of global opinion shifts. This is common to everyone for the solar eclipse, and especially in topics of religion, which we see the religion in the ninth house, there may be some important philosophical or religious things going on, but also shifts about patronage and healing. And the second half of March is going to be uh, going to be dominated somewhat by the lunar eclipse, which is March 24th. The sun at this point has moved into your 10th house, ambitious, life's ambitious purpose and goals, and your reputation. So uh, because lunar eclipse is a certain amount of um, uncertainty factor, you want to be ready for anything, keep the faith, use science, and troubleshoot. Um, so even though that lunar eclipse is actually in your fourth house, so very important for you to double check all things on the home front. So. That's it for February, a little sneak preview in March. Very interesting times. Have an excellent month. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Victoria Martin. Bu akşam seminerimizi canlı olarak mobil uygulamamız üzerinden yapıyoruz.